Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kat, and today I am doing my favorite Frankenstein retellings. So I recently realized that I have read 10 Frankenstein retellings, which seems like the perfect number for a video, as well as perfect for me to keep track because I like to read them every year. So if I do a video this year, then in future years, I can do update videos. And this is also just a good thing for me to remember all of the ones that I've read. So I'm gonna count down and go from 10 to one. So let's start off with number 10, which is Frankenstein in Baghdad by Ahmed Sadawi, translated by Jonathan Wright. So this is a novel about Iraq, written by an Iraqi author. And we are following Hattie, who is living in war-torn Baghdad and he collects body parts of people who have been blown apart in order for him to stitch them together into a body because the only way that they'll be given a proper burial by the government is if they are in a complete body. It's very gruesome and it does have Frankenstein themes. However, the reason that this is number 10 is because I remember it having a lot of sexist elements, which is not my jam. So that's why it's number 10. Number nine is My Name is Monster by Katie Hale. This one I had super high, <laughs> super high anticipation for. In fact, I thought I would love it so much that my husband and I spent, I think, two months reading it out loud to each other before bed. And we're following a woman who was in one of the seed vaults when basically this huge nuclear bomb went off and everyone on earth died. She has been known as monster because she thinks that she doesn't have emotions and she can't really understand other people. So when she gets out of the seed vault and everyone is gone, um, she is kind of scavenging and making a life for herself. That is until one day when she stumbles upon a young girl and she wants to be mother. So the reason why this is number nine is because I really don't think this has anything to do with Frankenstein. I'm mad because it was blurbed as like Frankenstein, but it absolutely was not like Frankenstein. It didn't have any similar themes. It didn't have any um, motifs or exact instances that are reinterpreted. So that's why it is number nine. It was a good story as a dystopian, but I really wish it had not been blurbed as like Frankenstein. Number eight is Frankenstein by Junji Ito. So this is a retelling through Junji Ito's lens. Uh, this is also illustrated. And the thing about this is that the illustrations are creepy. I will definitely give it that. Um, they're very, very creepy, which is fine, but it's not exactly my cup of tea. Like I like um, maybe different types of illustration styles personally, as well as I think Ito relies a lot on his illustration and he does not develop characters well at all. So that is why it is number eight. Number seven is Deep Light by Francis Harding. This is a mashup of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea and Frankenstein. And it definitely, definitely, definitely deserves that blurb mashup because it is like that. So we're in a world where there's a lot of seafaring and trade uh, and there are a lot of submarines, submersibles, bastifiers, sailors. There's a lot of ocean themes happening, but this world is one where ocean gods used to exist. And then about 14 years ago, there was a civil war and they basically killed each other. However, one day when one boy goes down and is drowning, his friend swims down to help him and happens to pick up something from the deep that maybe he shouldn't have. So this one was very interesting and it definitely did have Frankenstein themes, absolutely. However, I think it was a little weak on characterization, so that's why it's number seven. Number six on this list is Frankenstein by Jeanette Winterson. This is following kind of three timelines. One is where a transgender doctor named Rye is following, falling in love with Victor Frankenstein. One is a cryogenics facility that is talking about bringing people back to life after they're, they are frozen. And one is a sex bot convention. So this is very interesting. I remember some of the stories are, some of the threads are stronger than others. However, 
I couldn't really put this book down and it was very weird and bizarre. It's one of the more creative retellings in my opinion um, and that is why it gets number six. Number five is another graphic illustration retelling. This is Gris Grimley's Frankenstein. So Gris Grimley's style of illustration is just so perfect for Frankenstein. I cannot iterate that enough. It's very kind of, what can I say, angular with like little curly cues and stuff. And it just looks very old time Victorian Gothic. And his take on the characters and his development and characterization is a lot stronger than Jinji Ito's. So if you were looking for an illustrated novel that kind of sticks to the original story pretty closely, I would definitely recommend Gris Grimley over Jinji Ito. But I have to say that my all-time favorite graphic illustrated version is Victor Laval's Destroyer. So this is also a reimagining, but it kind of uses the original tale as inspiration and we're set in modern times instead of back when the original was set. So this is following modern day descendant of Victor Frankenstein, who is a black scientist at the top of her field. And she is wanting to use a combination of Frankenstein's methods and nanobots to bring her dead son back to life. And we are also following the 200 year old monster who is trying to track her down. So this is great. And the illustration style is exactly up my alley. It is so, so good. The colors are absolutely amazing. And I cannot wait to read the next one. And this is definitely my number one recommendation for Frankenstein graphic novels. Number three on this list is Salt Slow by Julia Armfeld. This might seem weird because this is a short story collection, but one of the short stories is a retelling of Frankenstein and it deals with women and the pizza man. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. But the reason that this collection is so high on the top of my retellings list is because all the stories in here are amazing. This is one of my top two short story collections of all time. I highly recommend it. It deals a lot with um, the feminine point of view as well as very dark tones and talking about different things we do in society. And of course, one of the stories is Frankenstein retelling. Number two is The Machine by James Smith. This was one that I recently read and was completely blown away by. To be honest, when I started it, I thought it was going to be bad because it was slow and it was a lot of tell in that show. But then, but then, but then, but then, it got so, so interesting. So this is following Beth, who is in a dystopian UK. Uh, there's been a big war. Her husband comes back, he has PTSD, and the government says if he uses this black box, he can put the bad memories in the box and they can be replaced by good memories. However, there is always a catch and her husband becomes catatonic. So she decides she's going to track down the illegal black boxes and put the memories back in her husband herself. What could possibly go wrong? This was so good. And also so many of the elements that were in the original Frankenstein are also in this conversation of science versus religion, man versus nature, man versus woman, um, what is truly a monster, memories, war, like violence, adolescence versus adulthood. This was so good and a complete surprise to me. Like I was completely shocked and delighted. And my current all time favorite Frankenstein retelling is The Dark Descent of Elizabeth Frankenstein by Kirsten White. This is a retelling of Frankenstein through Elizabeth's perspective and it is so, so, so good. So she is a complete total badass who wants to use her power and her station in life to improve her life. And she is not going to let Victor get away from her. Um, as well as this has a very pleasing alternative ending to Frankenstein, which I love more than the original um, for many reasons, but I'm not going to spoil anything. But this is my absolute favorite retelling of Frankenstein. So that finishes up my top 10 current Frankenstein retellings. Let me know what you think down below. Also, please, please, please recommend some to me if you have them. I have a few ideas for next year, but I always love to read Frankenstein retellings and put them on my future TBR list. So without further ado, I'm going to give you lots of love in the comments below and I will see you later. Bye.